Hello there, this is Glenn Berry from Dr. DMV LLC, and I'm back with another video. In this video, we're going to cover one query, and it's a very useful one. This will be Query 33, VLF Counts. This series of videos is going through the complete set of my SQL Server 2019 Diagnostic Information Queries. These queries are available for free at glensqlperformance.com resources. Please keep in mind that I have other sets of SQL Server diagnostic queries for other versions of SQL Server, Azure SQL Database, and SQL Managed Instance. The queries you see demonstrated in this video are very similar or identical to the queries for older versions, and the same concepts apply. Now let's take a look at the documentation for Query 33. This query reads from the SysDMDB Log Info DMV, which is documented here. It also reads from sys.databases, which is documented here. This query simply tells you the VLF count for each database on the current instance of SQL Server. VLF stands for Virtual Log File. Now let's go ahead and run this query and see what data comes back from it. So we'll go ahead and run this, and you can see that each database on the instance is listed, and then the VLF count is listed in the second column. And you want to keep your VLF counts as low as possible depending on the size of your transaction log file. And the size of your transaction log file depends on a lot of things like how often you take transaction log backups and how much write activity you have going to the log file and whether you're doing things like index maintenance that cause a lot of log activity. So depending on all those factors, that's going to dictate how large your transaction log has to be. Based on the size of that, you want to keep your VLF counts as low as possible because high VLF counts cause several different issues. One issue is that it takes your databases longer to go through crash recovery, and that happens every time you start SQL Server. It also happens when you fail over from one node to another in a failover cluster instance. It also will affect how long it takes to do a full database restore. So if you are restoring and it gets to where it says 99%, 100% done, and it still keeps grinding away for several minutes, that is because it's going through the recovery portion of the restore, and that's because you have a high VLF count. Looking at these results, I'm not very concerned about any of these databases. I only start to worry if it's above a couple hundred, and if it's in the thousands, then I definitely want to do something about it. And the reason you get high VLF counts is that you have lots of small log growths. So if we go back to the query, I've got some documentation right here that explains the formula for how you get additional VLFs. So if you're on SQL Server 2014 and newer, they changed the algorithm for how VLFs are created. And how many VLFs you get depends on how large the log growth was. And it's always been that way, but the number of log VLFs you get depends on how large the growth is. So if it's under 64 megabytes for the growth, you get four new VLFs on older versions of SQL Server. And if it's between 64 megabytes and one gigabyte, you get eight additional VLFs. And then if it's more than one gigabyte, you get 16 VLFs. And that's the old formula for SQL Server 2012 and older. But starting with SQL Server 2014, there's a new formula. So if the log growth increment is less than one eighth of the current size of the log file, then you only get one VLF. And if it's larger than one eighth of the current size of the log file, then you use the old formula that you see below. So that's how that happens. And in a second here, we'll go ahead and take a look at, at a demonstration of how this works. So the general way that you want to reduce your VLF counts is to only grow your log file in larger chunks and do it less often instead of lots of small growths. So let's go ahead and play around and, and see how that works. So I'm going to create a database with a log file that's 4096 megabytes in size. And this will take a couple seconds to create because it has to create the log file and then zero it out. You have to do that even if the instant file initialization is turned on. It doesn't work on log files. So we've done that. We've created that. And let's run the query that we saw earlier to see how many VLFs. So it's 16 VLFs are in there when we created it from the beginning. And then if we go in and grow it a little bit more, and when that finishes, we'll go ahead and check the VLF count again and see how many VLFs we got added. So now we're up to 32, so we grew it by eight more gigabytes. And then if we grow it again, 
by 1,024 megabytes. And that went pretty quickly since it was a small increment. And we check the VLF count one more time here. We'll see it went up to 40. And now we're large enough so that if we grow it by 1,024 megabytes, it's going to be just a smaller increment and it's going to trigger that new formula that we were talking about earlier. So we go ahead and do that. And then we check to see what the VLF count is again after we grew it another 1,024 megabytes. And it only went to 41. So now if you have your auto grow set to 1,024, once you get to that size, then each growth is only going to be one VLF. So that's pretty nice. And that will help keep your VLF counts lower without you having to worry about it. And the way you would fix it if there was a problem with the really high VLF counts is if you're running a full recovery model, you take a transaction log back up and then you try to shrink the log file. And usually that will reduce the VLF count. Sometimes you have to take another transaction log back up and then try to shrink it again. And sometimes you have to take even more than that. But usually that process is what you're going to have to do to shrink the log file to get rid of the VLFs. And then you manually grow it in large chunks to get it to the size that you want it to be. And you make sure the auto grow is set to a fairly large chunk instead of a tiny sliver of a growth. This is Glenn Berry and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you would like more content like this because it really helps the channel out. Thanks for watching.